Alright, I know this is a bit late since the movie came out a little while ago, but I've been very busy and only just now got some time. I don't really have a cool intro for this video, I just really want to talk about how good this movie is. I have a lot to praise and so much I want to say. But before I get going, I will say that this video contains some spoilers, not too many because I don't have footage of this movie, so I might come back and do a more in-depth review when the movie comes out on digital. This movie is absolutely amazing. From the story and the character arcs to the stunning animation and soundtrack, there's so much to love about this movie. The animation is genuinely stunning. There wasn't a moment where I wasn't mesmerized by the stunning visuals, the vibrant colors, and the fluidity of the animation. Like in the last movie, different characters have different animation speeds, and each universe has its own distinct color palettes and art style. I can't even pick a favorite because they all look so good. I especially love the effects for the spot and his abilities. Another huge and extremely underrated part of the movie is the color. In particular, I want to focus on Gwen and her father, Captain Stacy, and the motifs and symbolism that arise from them. In the first scene where Gwen's dad is trying to talk to her at the beginning of the movie, Gwen is unreceptive. The side of the room in which her father is standing is filled with colors of passion, such as red, orange, yellow, and purple. On the other hand, Gwen's side is a deep turquoise, or a mix of green and blue. These colors are more associated with sickness and melancholy, respectively. This is important because it has recurring themes in the rest of the movie. During the montage of Miguel looking for Miles, Miles escaping the Spider Society, and Gwen being sent back home, color once again takes on this symbolism. Behind Miguel in one shot shines a red light. Firstly, this is a color commonly associated with evil and power, but secondly, it is also a classic Spider-Man color. Because Spider-Man is a hero, his color being used in a negative and unsettling context raises the question of whether or not the Spider Society is actually good. For Miles, he is swinging in a turquoise-tinged city, again, associated with the despair he is feeling in his panicked state. There are also small pop-ups of red, representing the converging spider society as they get closer and closer to Miles. Gwen, on the other hand, is in a blue and purple city. As already established, blue, the main color in these shots, represents melancholy, while purple is more about emotional instability. These two create a tone in which Gwen is upset because she has been sent back home, but her panicking and impulsive destruction of her surroundings puts her in an unstable and emotional mindset. Finally, the scene where Gwen and her dad meet again bears significance. This time, Gwen is appealing to her father, who is in a depressed state after losing his daughter and resigning from his job. Gwen, this time, is in the bright colors, in this case being pink. Captain Stacy is now the one in the turquoise. In the moments when her appeal is working, the background becomes white with squiggles of the same red, orange, yellow, and purple from the first scene behind both people. Finally, when they have reconciled, the background is a white color, a symbol of purity and healing. You can see how the colors are a subtle way of conveying the story, while also providing context and continuity between scenes. The soundtrack is also amazing. Daniel Pemberton is a musical genius. The soundtrack for both Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse are awesome, and I haven't seen enough people giving it the credit it deserves. The quieter moments are impactful, and the grander moments hit so hard because the themes and leitmotifs are awesome. I don't know how much of it I can show, but I'll link some of my favorite tracks in the description for you to check out. I also want to touch on the characters and story. The pacing was great. This movie is actually nearly 40 minutes longer than the first one, and that extra time really allows for character development, and for the story to take its time. I mean, seriously, the first hour is nearly all about character development. And even in the midst of the plot, there's a lot of room for the development of the characters that we know and love. It's refreshing to have a story that isn't being rushed. 
The first 20 minutes are all about Gwen, then the next 20 minutes are about Miles, and then there's another 20 minutes of Gwen and Miles together before the multiversal aspect takes over. The movie goes on for an hour before big things really start to happen, and I actually really appreciate this. It's become a trend where superhero movies rush into their plot lines, and it's something I didn't even know I was tired of until I watched Fight Club. Similar to Across the Spider-Verse, Fight Club takes its time on introducing plot details. Tyler Durden, one of the main characters, is first introduced 22 minutes into Fight Club. In this movie, the spot is also introduced at the 22 minute mark. An hour of character development is used so well that I didn't even realize we were halfway through the movie by the time Miles actually follows Gwen through the portal. In terms of the spot, I will say that he's a great villain. He feels like a normal guy, and I actually love that. Rather than an over-the-top villain like we usually get, it's a breath of fresh air to see a villain who's just... a dude. He's mad that Miles accidentally turned him into the spot, which in turn made him lose everything. It's understandable, and like I said, the spot jokes and quips and acts like a normal person, which I love. However, there is a scene in one of his fights that is a little bit too silly for me. It's where he kicks his own ass into a multiversal realm where he finds out he can travel the multiverse. I know that you're not supposed to take Spot seriously until it's too late, but that should come from Miles' cocky attitude, not from the Spot being overly incompetent. It would have been better if the Spot just got too angry and accidentally opened a portal into that multiversal realm. Around the hour mark, when Miles follows Gwen to Mumbatton on Earth 5101, the movie really gets good. It was good before, but it just gets better. We get introduced to Pav, and he's immediately a great character. Then we get introduced to Spider-Punk, who I went into the movie thinking I wasn't gonna like, but he ended up becoming one of my favorite characters. Plus, there are a ton of parallels and callbacks that stem from this part. When Pav has to choose between saving two lives, he says, I can do both, which is something that Miles repeats when he has to choose between his father and the multiverse. Doing both is a common motif in this movie, like when Miles is late to the school meeting and the counselor says he can't have his cake and eat it too, Miles' response to that was, just buy two cakes. Gwen tries to stop Miles from breaking a cannon event, and Miles thinks that she was trying to protect him. Her response to that was, I was doing both. It's cool to look back on and see these little hints and repetitions that play into the themes and character development of Miles and Gwen. I actually love the fact that Spider Society comes with a bunch of cameos, but none of them are focused on. They are pretty much solely to enhance the story, and if they aren't part of the story, then they have a moment to shine and we quickly move on. Multiverse of Madness should take notes because this is the gold standard for a multiverse movie. When we get to the Spider Society, the movie once again gets even better. The scene where Miles learns that his dad is going to die is intense, and the tension just keeps on building and building, and it's so fucking good. This builds to a head when Miles is imprisoned, but he breaks out with Hobie's help and ends up being chased by the whole Spider Society. This part was exhilarating, and I was hooked throughout the whole thing. The confrontation between Miles and Miguel on the train was awesome, especially because Oscar Isaac is amazing as Miguel, and you could feel the malice in his voice as he just ripped into Miles. You could also feel the impact of his attacks, which is another testament to the animation. This entire sequence is the final fight of the movie, and it leads to a really big twist and a really big cliffhanger. Right before going into the movie, I was told that I would love the ending, so I expected something big to happen, and I predicted what the twist was going to be. So there were multiple points near the end where I thought that the movie was just going to cut to black and have it to be continued. I was right, because that did happen, but it just didn't happen when I expected it. <laughs> I would love to go more in depth about the ending and about my thoughts of the movie, but I don't have enough footage to go through it all, so I'm going to call the review here. I will definitely make a longer video when the movie comes out on digital, so you can expect that at some point. To wrap up my thoughts on this movie, I think it has cemented its place as my all-time favorite Spider-Man movie, maybe even my favorite comic book movie, and it has cemented Miles as one of my favorite characters. The writers, animators, songwriters, and composer clearly put so much love and passion into these movies, and you can tell. They managed to make Miles a character who I relate to to the point where I can put on my headphones, flick on one of the songs in this soundtrack, and I can feel like Miles in his home life, just because I can identify with him. 
And that's the point of these movies. Anyone can wear the mask. Anyone can do something great. Anyone can be Spider-Man, just like Miles. And while I'm certainly not Spider-Man, I can identify with him and his struggles. Anyways, yeah, those are my quick rambles about the movie. I absolutely adore it, and I can't wait for Beyond the Spider-Verse. What did you all think of the movie? I'd like to know your opinions. Let me know in the comments, and until next time, I'll see you all later. Goodbye!